welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Now today's bonus is a little different from usual. It's a new pencil puzzle that we didn't know until Alex Bellos's article in The Guardian today. Um, Alex does a Monday fortnightly puzzle article on The Guardian website and today's, as you can see, Can You Solve It? Double Chocolate is the title. Um, picture of some very appealing lamingtons and it says double choco is a new grid logic puzzle from japan below are three examples including a toughy which appeared in the 2020 uk puzzle championship last month so if i'd stayed for the sunday i'd have seen one of these pencil and paper puzzles like double choco are very absorbing hopefully they provide a stimulating and escapist activity during these days of quarantine and here here to that so here are the rules and an example puzzle so the rules of Double Choco are as follows. Um, I do invite you, by the way, tell me if you know why Double Choco is so called. Is it to do with chocolate or is there a Japanese puzzle with a similar name that it's been derived from? I don't know. Anyway, one, you have to divide the grid into blocks by drawing solid lines over the grid lines. So as you can see up here, you divide the grid into blocks. The uh, shapes don't have to be rectangular. Each block must contain a pair of areas of white cells and gray cells having the same form, size and shape. One area may be a rotated or mirrored image of the other. So you can perform any kind of transformation, but if you look at this three shape, there's three white cells in a row and three gray cells in a row. And it's got, I think the, yeah, the third rule is a number indicates the number of cells of that color in the block, which is therefore half the total number for the block. Block contain any a block can contain any number of cells with numbers in. So that three indicates that there are three white cells and three gray cells. These twos are both in the same shape. These threes are both in the same shape and on the same color. It doesn't really matter about that. So I haven't seen this sort of puzzle before and a couple of instances are provided in the article, which I think have been supplied by Tom Collier and Robert Volmert. And there was a much harder one in the UK Puzzle Championship, as mentioned, which what I think we'll do is I'll have a go at these two puzzles on this video, and then maybe we'll provide the really hard one on our Patreon site, something like that, for anybody who wants to have a go at it there. So... Simon's loaded the puzzles up in Penpa, and we're very grateful to them for creating this um, website. And I'm going to click on the first one, and here it is. Now, this is by Tom, and this is meant to be quite easy. Um, what we have to do here, just to let you know, we have to pick the edge mode of entry and then draw lines along the edges. So... Well, let's start with this nine. Now you can see which nine white cells are together. It must be these top three by three box because otherwise they'd run into an eight and that eight has got to be in an eight white cells area. So I can draw the line there. I think obviously also, well, no, I couldn't draw the line there, but I mean, it is clear that where is the nine? Where is the three by three grey box? Well, it's got to be this group down here connected. So that's a pretty easy start. The eight. Um, well, it's got to include all of these cells because otherwise the eight couldn't get out past the seven. So in fact, it's got to be the four by two rectangle in white. Where's there a four by two rectangle in gray? It has to be up here. So, I mean, that's, this is a helpful puzzle to understand the rules, I think. This seven, well, it's gotta be the next seven white cells in the kind of house shape. And there's the seven gray cells up there. Uh, it's yes, it certainly can't be here because you can't get seven into that gray block. So this is getting quite easy to start with. Six. <laughs> 
Okay, this puzzle's been set up to be fairly easy. It's the same thing again. The next six white cells is this three by two block that clearly connects with this, this three by two block on its left. The five, yep, that's the five white cells. Now, although they theoretically could connect with the four gray cells here and one below them at the end, I don't think that's very likely because how would all these gray cells to the left of the five shape get out of here? That just couldn't be. I think it's very clear that they connect up like that with this mirrored gray shape. The fours, well, you can draw the line that far down. Obviously, it's those four white cells. Therefore, it's got to be connected to the four gray cells below them. The threes, same again. It's the three white cells in a line because where else could the three go? And they must connect with the three in a line below them. Now it gets more interesting. And in fact, now we're seeing a feature of this puzzle that you don't have to have every shape have a number in it. So, um, well, we've got this one gray cell here and that must connect with a white cell and it's not this white cell. So, ah, oh, well, the two must connect with this white cell. I can draw that line in because the two, now which gray cells, I think it's got to be these two on the right because otherwise, how would they connect up with anything if the two went left or up? No, it's got to be like that. The one white has to connect with a single gray. So that's now, that's always had to be the one directly above it. This one gray must connect with a one white. And this last shape has finished, we're done because the four gray cells are together. They can't join onto anything else. So they're four gray cells in a line, four white cells in a line. So that puzzle was very easy. I mean, that's just a starter puzzle by Tom to explain how to do it. It's a very neat compilation to make it that clear how to do it. And there was no need, as you can see, to put a four in this box or a one in this one. So let's try the slightly harder one by Robert Volmert. And remember to hit the edge button. Yes, not the wall button. Okay, so this time we've got a huge gray square in the top corner, a tiny little one on the right, uh, which has to be part of a one piece. Um, now, last time I said that not every cell, ha not every shape has to have a number in it, but there's a lot. I'm going to add these up. Remember, every number... So a 10 is a shape that is 20 large, 10 gray and 10 white. So we've got 20, the nine takes us to 38. I'm gonna add one eight to 40, uh, that's 16. So that takes us to 54. One seven is 14, that's 68. One six, that's 12, that's 80. One five, that's 10, that's 90. One four, that takes us to 98. And then this one shape takes us to 100. So apart from the one shape in the corner, all of these numbers, oh, sorry, every shape has a number in it. And the four and the four, one in gray, one in white, they are connected. They're part of the same shape. And the same is true for the eights. So a little bit of maths establishes that. Now, where do we start here? The nine could make a big L shape coming out here, but it could equally do that down here. There are different ways for the nine to reach the edge of the gray area. And the same is true for the seven. The same is not true for the five. Interestingly, we start with one of the middle numbers. What, what do we do with this five? How does it get out of the gray area? Well, it has to use these five gray cells to reach white. And then the white area has to be five in a line. Now we don't know necessarily which way they go, but they must include those three at least. Um, 
now. I can't, I can't conclude anymore. Ah, look, now we've got a large empty gray cell area on the left. And remember, every shape, every cell, apart from down here, is in a block with a number in it. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. If you include the 9 and 7, and all the cells in the first, the gray cells in the first two columns, that is 16 cells. So that must occupy, that must use up all the gray cells that are in the seven shape and all the gray cells that are in the nine shape. So I'm going to rule those off there. Obviously, I think the nine must come down and connect there. And given the shape that the gray is for the nine, the white must be a similar shape. Five, nine, that goes to there. The seven, well, it's the same story. So it's six in a line and one offset at the end. So that's got to be like this. And now we know about the five shape, the five white cells in a line are to the right. Okay, so that's a good start. Look, more than half the grid done then, nearly. Now, how did the six and four get out? Yeah, I mean, it's important. The six can't come down here and in six cells reach the white. So it has to do it at the top. Now, if it came across anywhere other than in the top row, what shape could possibly cover the top row cells? Nothing. The four couldn't get up there. It just doesn't have enough numbers to go around the six and get there. So the six must occupy all of the top cell row, top cell the top row gray cells can't speak today. Now to match that shape, well, it's got to be three along and four down like that. So that's the six done. Now the four, it's the same story. It's got to occupy these three cells in the second row. Otherwise, what else could? I just don't think there's any way for anything else to reach them. So that's fine, but it's not like all these other cells. They've kind of been the outside, but that doesn't work because of where the four is here. And that has to be in the same shape. So we need three white cells in a line like these three gray cells. And this one up here is clearly in the shape, as is the four. So the lines there, and obviously it's not this white cell because that would lock two white cells in. So it's that rather surprising shape for the four. Oh, well, now the puzzle has been reduced to divide the rest of the grid into the 8 and the 10 shape and, of course, this little one shape at the bottom. How do we do that? There seem to be a lot of possibilities, but look, this, this two-cell bit here, that's probably in the 8 shape. And where can you get a two cell kind of horn sticking out of this eight shape? I think it might have to be these two, the eight and the cell on its left. So it's gonna have to join up there. Well, I mean, the eight has to get out onto the white. So it has to do that through this barrier and all these cells above it have to be in the eight shape as well. So I wasn't sure about this kind of cell on the right of the 10 but given the shoulders that seem to have to be in the white shape this is right and I mean this works because now the white 8 shape exactly is a representation of the grey 8 shape and that's fine the 10 shape and now I can see that that 10 shape is fine it gets out here connects with the white shape and obviously it fits like that and you're left with this little one shape down here so not too bad as a puzzle once you kind of find where to where to start and how to think about the gray shapes and remember that you can't lock off little areas now the um the uk puzzle association puzzle is on a much bigger grid um and has very few numbers in it i mean i looked at the picture of the puzzle so it'll be tough but um, we will, as I say, probably upload that onto our Patreon site and you can have a go at it there if you're 
if you're joined and otherwise and maybe we'll do a video about it one day as well but that's double choco quite entertaining thanks very much to alex for showing it um alex is of course a friend of this channel he christened our sandwich sudoku back when that took off and uh has always been kind of somebody who's a supporter of the channel we're very happy to support him especially when he's bringing intriguing new puzzles to us so thanks very much for watching do stay safe and uh keep stretching your mental your mental muscles thanks very much i'll see you again soon on cracking the cryptic bye for now